Hey everyone, it's Margaret Berry here once again with this week's Tuesday tip. I'm going to be talking about metabolism and how it relates to exercise, muscle building, and your resting metabolic rate. So if this is something you have questions about or you're curious about or you feel like you work out and you don't see changes, this talk is for you. The first thing you need to know is that the more muscle mass you have on your body, the higher your resting metabolic rate will be. And the reason for this is because muscle is more metabolically active than adipose tissue, meaning it burns more energy, more calories at rest. Now there's a couple things that you need in order to build this muscle. You cannot build muscle without stimulus or exercise. The muscle has to have that stress, those little micro tears in order to grow. And you cannot have muscle gain and muscle building, lean muscle building, without adequate caloric intake. Well, let me say that again. You cannot build lean muscle without adequate caloric intake. If your body cannot digest those calories, if it cannot process the carbs and fats and disassemble those amino acids for use to build muscles, you're not gonna be able to build muscle as easily either. Oh, and here's the kicker. You actually need a surplus of calories, protein, fat, carbs, to build muscle mass. And if you're not eating enough calories and you're exercising, you're still working out, but you're not eating enough, you're actually burning your own muscles, your own tissue for fuel. More on that in a little bit. So if you're working out a lot and you're not eating enough to compensate for it, you're lowering your metabolism twofold. You are failing to build muscle, which would help raise your body's metabolic rate, but you're also requiring more of your body than you're giving it fuel for. So this causes and encourages what we call catabolism. Catabolism is the opposite of metabolism. It's breaking down of structures. It's breaking down your tissues and structures for glucose because you're not giving your body enough fuel. And guess what? This requires the adrenals to secrete cortisol, which helps break down those tissues into glucose. So if your adrenals are stressed, keep that in mind. Now, you wouldn't expect your car to go on a road trip on a quarter tank of fuel and not expect that it's going to need a refuel, right? It's going to stop at some point. Things are going to break down at some point. The fact is, if you're not fueling your body appropriately, your body's not going to prioritize muscle building. It always prioritizes survival. Your body's not going to prioritize good sleep. It's going to prioritize survival. Your body's not going to prioritize fertility and reproduction. It's going to prioritize survival. So what is your body going to do if it's not sure that you're going to give it enough food for its needs, enough calories, enough proteins, enough fats for its needs? What, do you, what will it do? Well, your body is going to store energy. It's going to store fat because it's not sure when it's gonna get any more, so by golly, it better keep it for safekeeping. And we get mad at our body for this. It is a natural response to caloric deprivation. You're not sure, your body's not sure when its next meal is gonna be there, so by golly, it's gonna hold on to what you just gave it as hard as it can. The next question that people ask me is, well, how much am I supposed to eat? How many calories am I supposed to eat for my body? And a lot of it is intuitive. However, there are these little calorie counter things you can go on, you can plug in your height, your weight, your activity level, and it will kind of give you an idea of what to expect your caloric needs to be. Now, in the beginning, I was not used to eating enough and I had no idea and no framework and no concept of what it looked like. So I did keep a closer eye on it. Now that I'm a few years into this, I eat intuitively. I know my body's needs, I'm very in tune with it, and occasionally I will spot check and just be like, I'm just gonna check and see how much I'm eating these days and see if it matches up with what I think my body needs right now. Now you might say, well, Margaret, I'm scared. Like, I'm scared to eat more than I am right now. Well, I understand. I've been there, I know what it's like. It is scary, it is terrifying to start eating more when you're used to not eating very much. And yes, you might not see any changes at the very first. In fact, you may need to put on a little bit of weight. Again, why does your body put on weight? It's storing it for a reason. And for many people, the reason is they've been pushing down their metabolism and dampening it down for years with diets and caloric restriction that when they finally give it what it needs, it's like, are you sure that I can 
eat and have enough food for what I need? I'm not sure yet. I'm not going to let it go until you give me a reason to think that it's okay to let it go. Your body's very, very, very smart. And a lot of that depends on how long your metabolism has been dampened down, how long you've been working on this, how long you have been on the hamster wheel of diets. But my question for you is, what's the alternative? Is what you've been doing for the last year, the last month, the last decade, how is that working for you? How are you feeling? How is your health? How is your sleep? How are your hormones? How are you performing in your workouts? Do you have enough energy? How's your stress resilience? All of these questions can help you determine if what you've been doing is working or not. And this is a little tough love here too, but Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Now, I understand. I have been there personally. I get it. I used to be on the hamster wheel of the diet, the exercise, and scared to eat too much, but also scared to work out because it might make me more hungry and I'm too scared to eat more. I was scared to eat enough to build muscle, so I just let my metabolism just get lower and lower and lower until I took the leap of faith and I did what was healthy for my body instead of what was trendy because those two things are not always the same. So really, the bottom line is, if you're gonna work out, you need to fuel yourself appropriately. Don't expect yourself to build muscle and see these changes from exercise if you are failing to give your body the basic building materials it needs to make muscle and promote all of these positive changes. Train well, move well, eat well. It all goes together. And if you need some help, I offer nutritional coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I also offer some testing to help you determine your metabolic type, your oxidative type, your mineral status, and your metabolism. And I'd love to work with you on this. I have a link in my bio that goes to a questionnaire that you can fill out to see if I'm a good fit for you as a practitioner. And if you have any further questions on this, because I'm sure you probably do, feel free to leave any questions below. I'll be doing a live Q&A, like I said, on Instagram on Thursday night. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys, and I'll see you next time.